Welcome back to the Traders Network Show as we conclude our coverage for Humanity 2.0. I'm Matt Bird broadcasting worldwide from Rome, Italy from the Pontifical Oriental Institute. And my next and last guest is a man who's responsible for the last two days festivities, Matthew Harvey Sanders. Matthew, welcome to the show. Thanks, Matt. Appreciate it. So, um, Matt, Matt, uh, you're the co-founder of Humanity 2.0. And co-creator, you are also the founder of Longbeard. I am, and they actually go hand in hand because Longbeard and what you do, at Longbeard for impact, um, both for the Vatican and the peripheral, you know, nonprofit organizations, kind of put you in a position where you have to build a launching pad like Humanity 2.0. Yeah, I mean, I'm very much. I, I think it was, uh, you know, the privilege be able to come to Rome yeah. and to work with the Catholic Church in, in the Vatican. Um, that kind of exposed me to um, a lot of uh, problems I hadn't thought about before, <laughs> um, like uh, getting people from different sectors, like the public and the private, and even yeah. the faith sectors, which is, you know, I, I found, uh, I, I realize now has been uh, very much ignored when it comes to, to impact in, in many ways. Getting them all together and to realize the possibilities um, uh, for advancing human progress that can be found by by facilitating more collaboration between those parties. So, you know, we, we had a chance to interview a lot of people. You did a bunch of interviews. We've been interviewing for the last nonstop the last two days. Got coverage from every, every angle, from some amazing individuals, from Dell to Oxford to MIT to Inc. and to Forbes and Google, and the list goes on and on and on and on. How did you pull it all together? <laughs> I mean, it's a, this was an undertaking, and, it, and it, it, it's not, it's not like it was, you know, you're doing a rock concert. This was a high impact audience uh, curated specifically for this event. And uh, you got some amazing people to show up. Um, you, you just, everything was top notch. Well, thanks, man. I, I mean, I appreciate you saying that. I mean, as to why people can, uh, came, I mean, I, we were even surprised. Yeah. Um, um, we sent out, um, you know, around 400 invitations. <laughs> and uh, we were told to expect about 5% of people would, would confirm, and uh, it was 40%. So, and that's one of the reasons why our event was over capacity, uh, which is a high-class problem. Um, but um, I, I, I think it speaks that people um, right now are starting to realize that humanity is kind of at a crossroads. Uh, we're another one of those um, um, uh, points where we can kind of go right or left, and you know, I think the, say the environmental crisis is, is one such example of that, um, where it's, it's kind of forcing humanity to think collectively and to think as a tribe, one tribe, which is the human tribe, because the challenge is, is that big and the only way to tackle it and overcome it is if human beings come together. And so I, I think because we're faced with this enormous challenge that we're all very open to, to new ideas and, and new methods of collaboration. And I think that's one of the reasons why um, these diverse actors came together is to explore if Humanity 2.0 could be one of those actors. You know, in my experience, and I've done a lot of work with the, with the UN and, and the e Parliament, Trade Department and stuff over the years, um, one of the things I think you did exceptionally well was the collaboration with the Vatican. It made this an experiential advocacy event, if you will. And it separates it from all the other stuff out there that is on their own or isolated because the, the, the power that's behind all of this the, is just was, it was like gravity. It was pretty amazing. And uh, in the event environment that you, you put it together and, and uh, the experience that you, that, you, that you formed for everybody, I think is something that ev not a single person will ever forget. Uh, I mean, I can tell you certainly for me, it was a special thing and I'm looking forward to the next one. Uh, but uh, I think you, did, you put together a right mix of experiential content and influencers, and you, everybody's going home thinking about what the things that they can do to, to help. Um, and you did a cr great job, really good, great job. I have to give you, give you credit for, for well, that. Thanks, Matt. I mean, I think one of the reasons why we wanted to convene here at the Vatican is um, I think that we are faced with enormous challenges, but humanity has faced enormous challenges before, and we, we're still here. We've managed to overcome. And uh, the Catholic Church is, 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 is unlike any other institution. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's, it's the largest tangible network on the planet. You know, it, it, most people don't know that it manages 26% of healthcare facilities globally. Is that, is that right? That's right. Or and most people don't know that it, it's, uh, <laughs> it supports over 140,000 schools. You know, and people forget it's the largest NGO on the planet. 
Oh. And, uh, and, and that's, that was actually something that shocks me as well when I, when I realized yeah. it. We forget, we think of this institution as just a religion. Um, but in fact, it's, it's the largest impact organization in human history. Yeah. Um, and, and so I think when you start looking at it like that, you start looking at it um, less as, as a religion, not to diminish that, that important part, but as a platform. Um, and so I think that the church right now is starting to become more and more aware of these, these problems. And, and they're recognizing they have to do something about it. And they're recognizing that they do have a platform at humanity's disposal. What they need is, is ideas about how to leverage it properly to serve uh, human interests. Mm. And that's one of the reasons why we convened here. Because we convene people from emerging tech, um, from you know, high-level academia, is to kind of explore how we could work together to propose new models for the church to leverage its platform to accelerate human progress. Mm. I mean, it's a true public-private partnership for, for format. I mean, it's it's terrific, and I, I give you I give you I give you credit for that again. I mean, it's just it's just it's, it's just substantial. So, the event's over. You're looking back. Um, what were some of your favorite outtakes from 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 yesterday? Well, I mean, there was one panel, the business leaders panel in particular, that yeah. I remember um, mainly because it was quite feisty. I mean, they were they were going back and forth. Um, there was these ideas of, uh, you know, one of the gentlemen on on the panel was saying that you know we need to have a, uh, ethical standards, common ethical standards, and they had another representative of another company saying, no, it's not, that's not really, uh, it's not really possible. <laughs> um, and, and so I think that, yeah. I think, listen, I, we weren't expecting there to be any resolutions, obviously, on, the, on this issues. But I think that the conversation is very important. And I, I don't think a lot of the companies get many opportunities to discuss things like ethical frameworks um, very often. And, and I think that there was a great eagerness to continue that conversation. And unfortunately, when you're at a, a forum, you have, to, you have to end the conversation. But the idea was to kind of start a conversation that could, could carry on into the breaks and hopefully we'll travel back to their company headquarters. <laughs> you know, my takeaway uh, was, and, it, and it, it, you have to look at it from a binary standpoint, my takeaway was, I think business ethics means different things to different companies based on what they need. Sure. You know, um, some need climate control stabilization. And we, sure, we all need climate control stabilization, don't get me wrong. But when they look at what, what's preeminent for them, they have to look as a, because when you look at it as a corporation, they're gonna speak from a corporation standpoint, what's most important to them. You know, some could be corporate social responsibility, some could be climate control, others could be sustainability. Right. Uh, you know, it's just, uh, and, and you know, one company could be in the, you know, the bottle making business and sustainability is recycling, the other is in the apparel business and climate control is important to them. Right. You know, um, the other could be an online marketplace and corporate social responsibility. Is, is, is most important to them and uh, well, consumer well, advocacy. And I, I think, listen, I mean, I, my, so, feel, my feeling is that every company is, is, is created initially with a mission, mm -hmm. you know, a way of adding value to, to civilization. And, and I think, you know, part of the, the conversation that was really inspiring to me is, is going back to that and, and recognizing that your company, whether you like it or not, is having impact. Mm -hmm. Now, whether that impact is positive or negative is, is up to you. And, and I think, uh, you know, for a long time, there's been this narrative of, well, you know, uh, we're, we're really focused on, on making profit. That's, that's what kind of drives our company. And the mission thing is, is nice, but in the end of the day, we're really accountable to our shareholders, and, and what's important to them is maximizing profit. Yeah. And, 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 that's, and, that's, and that's the best way to run a business. And I think uh, companies like Patagonia, they made a, a, a very important uh, point, is if you put your employees and your customers first and their happiness and their well-being, that in the end, that actually doesn't um, d distract or diminish your profitability. In fact, it enhances it. And I think um, uh, there's a mythology that by, by focusing on, on advancing uh, uh, you know, human beings' interests, that, that somehow will, com will be compete with for profit. And uh, I, I think that's an illusion, and it's starting to actually start to uh, fall away. Yeah, you know, I think it, it, it's basically a thing that kind of rings is, is that maybe not one, one vertical or, or one of these buckets is, is the end all be all. Maybe it is, it is all of them together that form business ethics. Right. You know, I think businesses are at different stages at different times. Sure. You know, it's uh, uh, when, you're, when you're fortunate enough to be highly lucrative or highly profitable, you can then focus in on customer first. And a lot of times, and or if you're very efficient in other areas, and it's, it's not, it's, they're not first, it has to do with recycling and so, so forth, then maybe it's all. Right. You know, it's not, it's not maybe not one thing. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I think it, it, is, it is easier for a company that's, that's successful to, to, you know, allocate $100 million to advancing some, some, some form of impact. At the same time, I, I think every company can say, is the product that I'm developing actually in the interest of the human family? Am I actually helping humanity, moving it forward in some way? Am I actually meeting a true human need? 
Yeah. And, and I think that's an important process to go through. And I don't think that uh, necessarily has to be an ethical process. I think that that's, that's really a business viability yeah. process as well, right? Mm -hmm. it, you know, I may be able to convince or hoodwink people into, into putting a product to market that they think they will need, but in the end, they're gonna find out they don't and the business will fail. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think even from the investor perspective, I think uh, these conversations about what do people really want and developing products that meet those needs is actually becoming more and more valuable. Mm -hmm. What's uh, another one of your favorites? I, I, by the way, that's uh, as far as contact goes. I, I, I actually loved that panel, and I think it was it was terrific. Tell me about the um, innovation panel. It was one of the, one of the things that you that you you set up towards the end. Sure. Um, you had some heavyweights on that panel. I mean, it was uh, you had some thinkers. Like, how did it go? I mean, I think it went well. I mean, really, what we're, what we're trying to do there is say that yes, the the, the challenges that that humanity's facing are enormous, um, but we also we have a lot of companies and products and solutions yeah. which are, are up to the challenge. Um, and one of the things, the roles I think um, the Vatican can kind of play is, is to continue around problems, that, but then to lift up solutions um, that can meet those, meet those challenges. And that's what really kind of excited me about the emerging tech panels. I, th I thought it was over overall very helpful. Um, I think overall one of the insights was that emerging technology can be used for good or for bad. Um, it, it's, it's just really deliberately a company deciding whether it wants to, to use that um, technology to help humanity or harm it. Mm. And uh, I mean, obviously the, the companies that we, uh, we convened uh, had made a, a conscious effort to, uh, to mm -hmm. advance the human condition in some way. And people like, uh, you know, uh, Frank from, from Burst IQ, what they want to do digital me me right. medical records is, is revolutionary and very much needed. Mm -hmm. and, and, I, and I think people are becoming more and more open to the idea of companies providing so services like that recognizing that governments have a lot of challenges that they're facing and they're feeling overburdened. And so business, I, I think, it's, there's an open invitation for business to step up and to provide some of those, those services and help. And I think that's, that's, uh, that's an evolutionary kind of process that mm -hmm. I think has been a long time coming. Mm, interesting. How important, uh, in transitioning out, and, and I agree, agree with that, uh, uh, so absolutely. Uh, how, how important was it for the president of Malta to show up? Because I, I think um, it was a... It was, a, it was a big moment. Um, she captured everybody's attention. But how, how important was it for you? She's been one of our, our biggest supporters. And, and she's, uh, you know, in addition to being the president of the Malta, she's just a remarkable woman. And, um, and, and like she said yeah, yesterday at the forum, she considers herself a global citizen. And this is one of the reasons why we deeply identify uh, with her. Um, I think the idea of identifying ourselves as, this is how we kind of define the difference between humanity 1.0 and 2.0. Humanity 1.0 being we're all individual tribes competing for, for scarce resources. Mm -hmm. This is inherent adversarial relationship. And, and I think given the, the global context and the challenges that we're facing, we can no longer think like that. And the president saying that she's a global citizen is, I think, a, a foreshadowing of where humanity needs to go. Mm -hmm. and, and so her being there was really significant uh, because I think she is a new generation of, of politician, um, one that very much understands what's needed and is willing to step up um, and make a contribution. And that's what her foundation, which she's now uh, committed to, is trying to do. Hmm. What are some of the biggest takeaways from the event that you're, you're walking away with, in, in hindsight, maybe that you not necessarily intended as an outcome, but you look back and go, wow, that is, is pretty, it's a pretty big outcome. Um, I think more than anything else, it was, it was the positive feedback from the actual event yeah. itself. Um, I mean, I, I know a lot of these people go to really world-class uh, convenings like the World Economic Forum mm -hmm. and such. And so in many ways, I, we wondered, you know, how would our event measure up? Uh, a very humble uh, kind mm -hmm. of gathering in, in many ways. Um, but one thing I, I, I did realize is that people are really interested in talking about humanity and humanity's future. And, uh, and, and exploring how the public, the private, and the faith sector can actually work in tandem. Mm -hmm. um, that's a conversation I think that they're very open to and that they want to see more of. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I think we need, we need more forums to do it. Mm. Well, I, 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 I'm assuming you're gonna provide those forums. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna try our best. <laughs> hey, speaking of which, when, when is the next one? When's the next reboot? Uh, May 8th, 2020. Um, and the, the theme uh, of the next year's forum is how do we apply emerging technologies to tackle uh, impediments to human flourishing, as we call them, or, or human challenges. Mm -hmm. to get, um, one of the things that we're kind of toying with right now is, is how could we um, uh, go about putting together a, a, a technology stack? So I, a technologies which represent different industries, which mm -hmm. cover off some, some basic uh, services that every human person would need. Mm. And one of the reasons why we think this is important is because um, uh, there are still countries that are facing enormous difficulties, and there's, there, unfortunately there is still um, uh, uh, conflict, 
And in those times of conflict, basic social services can start to lack. Mm. And so is there a way that we could um, have a, a number of different companies from different areas come in and, and cover off those, uh, those basic social services in those, in those times? But also thinking about a time when humanity is, is, is more um, a, 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 of one tribe and we're able to kind of travel more freely and mm. a, a, a world without borders. And in said in world, we're gonna need to think about ways of, of storing digital you know, IDs and, 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 and traveling with our medical records and right. you know, safely and securely, and, which is why we're gonna need new, new technologies. Hmm. You know, you and I had a chance to chat a little bit earlier today, and we've had a few chats, but um, you were mentioning some things about what's, uh, what's, what's next and what's coming up next as far as um, your development cycles and stuff. Do you want to talk a little bit about uh, some of the initiatives you've got going on right now? Sure. Um, so one where um, I'm really excited about is the Humanity 2.0 Lab. Mm -hmm. And that lab uh, is, is, is focus is um, uh, looking at key, development, key developmental periods in human life and finding ways to optimize them mm. to, to ensure um, human flourishing. The lab right now is focusing on the, on the global maternal health crisis um, because, uh, well, it's the most important developmental period and right now um, uh, we have a crisis, and, and, and if, if we're really serious about investing and ensuring the next generation uh, flourishes, then we have to make sure we get this period right. Um, another project we're working on is, in, um, is, uh, is related to business ethics. It's trying to form an institution which has kind of two functions. One is focused around education around ethics, but really what we're talking about here is just thinking better, right? Yeah. Reasoning better. Yeah. How do we apply, how do we build on, you know, the, the the last 2,500 years of thinking and development in philosophical reasoning. How do we take all that learning and apply it to, to executives and help, to help them think better and prevent things like the Volkswagen crisis from happening, right? An ethical breach which destroyed a very important company yeah. which had a global impact. Um, and the, one of the other projects we're working on, which is our primary research project called Project Vision, is, is really focused um, around uh, zeroing humanity in on what are the most important problems we should be working on. Um, one of the things I, I say a lot is I think humanity gets distracted by a lot of symptoms of a larger disease. Um, and I, I think what's needed right now is we need to kind of um, be able to sort the symptoms from the disease if we're going to be serious about ensuring the next generation flourishes. That's interesting. That's interesting. Um, we, we've got just a few more minutes um, before we, we need to, we should probably shut down for the day. Uh, but um, um, what kind of messages, what kind of message do you want to get out? Um, I mean, you're, you're becoming a pretty prolific guy, and um, you're doing your part, but, you know, you've got an algorithm, and you do it in your work, it's, you see it in your work product, you see how passionate you are about everything. What's some key messages that you, that you feel is important to get out? Um, and it could be anything from how to conduct business, something, maybe something as if you're an entrepreneur, to just take a second to think about something, or as an individual, I mean, you, we... We're syndicated on a, on a number of different networks, and um, people of all shapes, sizes, creed, color, influence, private, public, will stumble across this interview, and, and this will be immortalized for a period of time. Uh, but uh, what, what would you like to what would you like to get out there? Well, let me share an, an ancient piece of wisdom that's been very influential to me. Um, and it's a quote: "If you know where you're going, you're more likely to get there." And, and I think uh, humanity, and I think, uh, to kind of dial it down, I think our economies, right now I don't think we have a, a clear sense of what we're trying to, to collectively build and achieve. And I think if we did have a clear sense of that, then we could work backwards and prioritize. What are the, you know, what are the things that are important, what are the things are not? What, what are uh, symptoms, and, and what is the actual disease? Hmm. Um, so, so my message would be to, to think more long term. And, and to have, um, you know, the freedom um, and the courage to, to think big. Hmm. Yeah, I, um, I, I, I'm a bit of a sci-fi geek, and I, I use the uh, example a lot of, of Star Trek The Next Generation. You oh. know, that show um, was hugely influential, and I, one of the things um, that I'd like to share is, is why, or the question I'd like to pose is why, and I think part of it is it showed a vision of humanity um, that made it. We'd evolved past um, racism. Hmm. We'd evolved past um, greed. Yeah, nobody, nobody was wanting for, for basic necessities of life. And I think um, we, we need that. We need to know that humanity can make it. We need to know what kind of civilization that, that we want to achieve. I, too, am a bit of a sci-fi geek. And, you know, looking at, at that as an, as an analogy is a really good one. But I think what, what, really, what really pulls together that Gene Rottenberry environment is that everybody at that point is, if you look at the Vatican, 
very much like what you see here at the Vatican. Everyone's working towards a higher cause, safety, protection, you know, stability. Um, you working as a unit to erect, erect like what, what you see here, these monuments, and, and creating a stable environment to, um, to you know, project peace and, and solidarity and all the things that, that come with that. Um, when you look at Star Trek to Next Generation, uh, this is the direction I think we're going to go with this, um, there is that unity because there's other worlds out there that everybody had to come together to figure out how to create stability, unity, and all those certain things. It took, it took aliens from other planets to realize right. that we need to be, we're one planet, not individual states right. and digi individual countries. Um, and uh, I'm smiling because I've, I've thought about this before, and uh, hopefully it doesn't take uh, you know a landing of a of a spaceship to, to, to bring people together. Well, you could say. I mean, I, I think I think what's what's what is what is kind of one of those kind of like existential like moments where you have to kind of you know think about your place in the universe is the fact that our planet, in many ways, is, is dying, uh -huh. right? And so I, I think we are in a moment where we are at a crossroads. We can come together and we can meet this challenge head on, and we can overcome it. Um, or we cannot, and just accept the fact that we're just not going to be around, uh, you know, in in a hundred years. You know, you said something a minute ago, which is um, about you know the the takeaway and, and if, you know and what what we should do, which is thinking long term and those sorts of things. You know, it's such a difficult thing to get everybody on the same page, um, especially when you've got inequality and income and all these different things that are going sure. on. And so this kind of comes, comes back around to like humanity 2.0, which is what we can do is, is communicate through networks. Right. And I think what you, you, you've built is the beginning of a platform which is connecting um, organizations, which those organizations have a network of their own. Right. And then that message is proliferated through and hopefully some mechanisms are put in place to be start thinking long term through those organizations. Right? Sure. I mean, well, listen, before I went to the World Economic Forum in 2018, and this really Humanity 2.0 um, was kind of birthed there, mm. um, I was given a piece of advice by the Vatican. Um, focus on what we can do together, not what we can't. And that was really the message that I, I hope uh, was clear at, at, at the forum, and I hope it's one that they take back. Um, I understand what institutions like the Vatican are perceived by me to be highly controversial. Um, but listen, uh, you can't dispute that, that they, to many people, are, very, are an incredibly important organization that have an enormous impact. And, um, working with them doesn't require you to accept everything that, that they believe. Um, it, it requires you to be open to uh, appreciating that you share um, um, common problems right. and that there's a resolution to do something about them. You know, um I look at this, it's interesting because I see a lot of similarities. You look at the Vatican and its history and its track record of adopting things. And just like any megalithic company, this is from my point of view, it takes time to validate whether there's a real market there or not. Mm. And you're seeing real market change. I mean, we saw this like with, I'm going to give an example that everybody could probably relate with, uh, the tablet industry. You know, there was, a, there was a time when Apple launched the iPad, which I have an iPad and a Mac and iPhone, I love, love Apple products, but there was a time that uh, um, they were saying this is going to be the end of Microsoft. And it was just impossible. It was impossible. They, they own 95% of, the, of right. the market. What they were waiting for is for the market to mature before they, they, they rolled out something. And, right. and uh, and they rolled it out, and, and there's now market-wide adoption of it, and, and they were able to do what they needed to do to make sure that um, there was an efficient use of time, energy, and resources. I think the Vatican, this is like, like one of those industrial revolution points where it's, we've got humanity like as a whole at a crossroads, and the Vatican's looking going, maybe the market's maturing for us to get involved techni on technology and a few other things that right. we've sat back because it's been changing so fast. Right. How, what, what, when you put, get, you put, you know, put, you put the stake in there. And I think you, you, you provided, you, you provided a good dial up um, opportunity for not just the businesses, um, but for the Vatican and the, to facilitate those conversations. Yeah, I, I think there's, listen, it's important to acknowledge that the, the Vatican, the Catholic Church, is, is, is its area of speciality is, is, is on theology and philosophy. Mm. That, that's what it's really <coughs> exceptional at. 
Um, that's not to say that the church hasn't contributed uh, a lot of other things in the realm of technology in the past, but, but today what we're really looking to um, uh, from, for in the church is philosophical and ethical and moral le leadership. Um, the, but the business community has a lot it can now offer to the church. The, the technolo emerging technologies are, are what are shaping the future right now. Mm. And, and I think um, what people are afraid of is that these technologies are kind of a runaway train and, and we're not really sure where they're leading us. And, and we're not really sure how to have a conversation about, about that. And I think that what the Catholic Church can do, because it's been doing it for so long, is to provide opportunities to have that conversation and to draw from you know, its 2000 history, the philosophical and ethical insights that's been developing over that course of time to help facilitate a conversation. And, and what I hope is to make clear where these technologies should be taking us. Hmm. Well, you know what? I love that. And I, I want to end on that note, if that's okay. Sure. And I'd like to tell you, I'd like to do a special shout out to Sheridan. She was incredible. Um, I, we, I don't think we could have done any of the stuff that we did today without her um, and yesterday. Um, you guys were great at supporting us and, and, and making sure that we had everything we needed. Um, and uh, we're looking forward to helping some of the things that you have co coming up in, in the next, like, you know, in the short term and the long term. Um, is there anything you want to talk about before we wrap up for the day? Thank you very much for what you guys uh, have done. I mean, coming here, I, I know, not to mention the jet lag, but um, <laughs> I, I think you guys took a leap of faith to come here and, uh, and to work with us. Um, so I, and I really appreciate it. And I really look forward to, uh, to working with you in the future. Me too. Me too. So that being said, this is going to conclude our coverage of the 2019 Humanity 2.0. Uh, I'm Matt Bird here with uh, Matthew Sanders as we wind down for the day, and hopefully we're gonna go grab a steak after this, is that right? Let's do it, dying for I steak. I am dying for food. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to put a special thanks out to my crew, Celine and Nicole, uh, they've been behind the camera and behind the scenes the entire time and, and been struggling and, and, and muscling through the long, grueling days. Special shout out to our team in New York, uh, in LA, and in, uh, in Florida. Um, we're coming back with a lot of good content and, uh, and good messaging. Uh, so to that end, good night, and uh, we'll, we'll talk to you next time. The 2019 Humanity 2.0 Forum is brought to you by Cisco Systems, CSR solutions that are accelerating global problem solvings in ways that have never been attempted before, to Ulala, providing mobile blockchain solutions for the unbanked, and to Pledge Camp, the next generation of crowdfunding. A special thanks to Tonico in Vatican City for hosting our program, and lastly, special consideration to Burst IQ, a leader in healthcare and blockchain, to Crown Sterling, the leader in digital sovereignty and quantum encryption, to Dignity Health, delivering high quality and affordable healthcare for all. And lastly, to Falcon Ventures, as transformative as our entrepreneurs. And thank you, one Hair Public Relations, for all your PR and media support. We'll be right back after these messages. Don't go away.